to demonstrate composition, I put a stack. Because no, uh, the, the examples that you see up there uh, in the notes, uh, they don't really show exactly what a composition is, just an example that could be interpreted as composition or non-composition. Now, this is a real composition, the one that you see over here. Um, so what I did, I created a template for a, for a, a, a stack. So what essentially a stack is would be this pause. So uh, a stack is uh, essentially, you know, you know what a stack is when we are talking about stack. This is a, these are a few markers, right? When I want to talk about stack, I essentially say a stack is uh, a first in, last out, or last in, first out, however you want to call it. So um, uh, you have a holder where you hold the items of the stack, and you, you push the first one in, then you push the next one in, then you push the next one. So the first one that was pushed in was green, the next one was blue, and the top one is black, right? So if I want to pick it up, which one I have to pick up first? It's the black one, right? So the last one that I put in will come out first, and then the next one, and then the next one, I don't have anything. The action of putting the data in the stack, we call it pushing. So push, push, push. The action of taking the stuff out of a stack, we call it pop. Pop the black, pop the blue, pop the green, and the stack is empty. Are we okay with this? Now, the stack is implemented like this. To be able to hold these data, they create uh, a container for the data. They call it a node. A node container is something like this. So essentially, a node container has two parts. One part is the data. One part is the data. And the other part is the pointer to the next node. OK? So essentially, the next one, so when you have series of nodes, the nodes can point to each other, not to each other, to the next one. So if I do something like this, <coughs> and they can be anywhere in memory. They are not in order. Because each one knows who is next, they can actually, you can actually keep track. So the first one that I put was green. So let's say this is the green one. This is the blue one, and this is the black one, right? So these are my data that I'm entering in. The stack itself, so these are not stack. This is, these are called nodes. So each one of this, so essentially this entity is called a node, OK? A node contains data and an address to the next thing. And the entity who manages this, hence, Composition is called a stack. A stack is a very simple object with respect to data. It simply has one pointer. It's a node pointer. OK? And this node pointer is usually called top. OK? So if I wanted to actually show the stack that I was talking about, so I said I pushed the green one in first, and then I push the blue one, and then I push the black one. So what your stack will look like would be actually something like, something like, something like, I'm trying to find my red marker and I cannot find it. That's OK. I'll use the black one. So the top will point to that. The black will point to Blue, the blue will point to green, and the green points to nowhere. So that becomes your stack. That's how it's implemented. If you pop the top one, what happens? You simply tell top, point to the next one. So top points to the next one. Therefore, <coughs> therefore, seriously, let me pause this. So essentially, what happens over here, when top points to the other one, obviously, if you're smart enough, first you delete this one. This one gets deleted. So this is gone. So now you see stack has two things. Yes? 
Pardon me? Yeah, I'm resuming. I, it, thank you for reminding though. Yeah. So now if I want to pop the next one, I don't have access to anything else other than top. That's how the stack works. Now if I want to get the next one, I'm going to say top is sets to tops next, right? So again, it points to this one, and now that is gone. And I say another pop. So top becomes tops next, which is no. And this one is gone. Now if I want to pop, I see top is null, so I know my stack is empty. As simple as that. So you're going you're gonna to study this in uh, data structures, OK? But to show something that actually is a good composition example, that's, that's what, I, because the code is very simple, I put that one up. Now I'm going to show you exactly what it is. So let's bring this thing back up and exit blank screen and bring the screen down. So that's my node, as you see over there. Now I added some spices to it too, but we'll talk about it later. So as you see, I have a class node. And that class node has a node pointer called next. That is by default null, which means when I create a node, it doesn't point to anything afterwards, right? I have a constructor created that sets the data and sets the next pointer, correct? Don't look at this static size for now. Let's just assume it's not there, OK? And I have a, and as you see, node is fully private, which means this is a class that is absolutely private, which means a constructor cannot be called. Therefore, you, nobody can instantiate this. It's a class, but it cannot get constructor cannot be called. Anybody can, no one can call this constructor, other than his friend that is the class stack. So stack becomes the sole manager of this node. Therefore, it's a set of those nodes. Nodes cannot exist without a stack. A stack doesn't have a meaning without its uh, Yeah, a stack can have a meaning without its nodes because a stack can be empty. But anyways, if I look at this, like, and what is the static thing that I have created over here? We know that static variables, class variables, are shared variable. So if I had five nodes, that num variable thing is only one shared by all of them. So in the constructor, I add one to it. In the structure, I reduce it by one. Therefore, I can always have a track of what is the depth of my stack. What is the depth of my stack essentially means how many nodes I have, how, much, how many data I'm keeping in the stack. How do I initialize that? As you know, all static values are getting initialized outside of, the, outside of the, the class, and it has to get created and initialized and set to zero. And that's what happens. So for each type of node that I have over there, I'm creating a static thing. Now, stack by itself is very simple class. It only has two things. That it's a const I'll show it to you. So, so stack has only one top pointer, as you remember. It always points to the top element in there. Whenever I push something, it creates a new node, sets the next to top. So whatever the top is pointing, next will point to. OK? So essentially, this is what happens. This is what happens. So now if you look at this, now look at that push thingy that I have. So stack initially is empty, right? Correct? When push happens, it says create a new node. So it creates a new node, correct? What it puts for its next? Top. What is top? Top is null. Look at this picture. Top is null, correct? So it puts the top over here. Then what does it do? It says put the address of this inside the top of the stack, correct? Therefore, this happens. And then it puts the data in that was black or green. It was green. The first one was green, right? 
so it holds the green in here. Okay, the second time I call push, what happens? Now I want to insert blue. So I call push again, it creates another node. And of course, blue goes in here. What next is pointing to? Where top is pointing, correct? So whatever top is goes to next, correct? Therefore, next will point to where top is pointing. And then takes the value of the node and puts it in top. So top is pointing here now. So as I add new nodes, as you see, top is always pointing to the top. And it keeps going like that. Should I insert the black too, or we are OK? Should I do it one more time? OK, so now if I want to insert black, it, ins it creates a new node, puts the data in it, makes next to point where top is pointing, and puts the address of the node in top. Therefore, top points over there. And this is done. Now I have three things, OK? I'm going to literally write this in a code. I'm going to literally put green, black, blue, and here we go. OK? Now, if I want to extract it, I want to get the top one. Now, for the top one, I actually wrote the code like C style, as if I'm doing a stack in C. So <clears throat> if I want to pop something out, what does it do? First, it creates a temporary value. So temporary value goes over here. That's my temp. It's popping now. That's my temp value. OK? Then what does it say? It says val is tops m data. Tops m data is black, right? So black gets copied over here. Yes? The declaration of the node, sure. So we don't need push. I'm just going to bring it down. Oh, declaration of node. We don't need this. So that's node. Node has a next, OK, and has a data. That's it. I'm not tracking the depth. I don't want to go there, OK? So essentially, what, when you create the constructor, I don't even know why I put the, null, uh, the default value over here. It's, not, it's always called that way. So let me take that thing out not to cause any uh, confusion. But that's what happens, right? So. Now, I'm saying, uh, is it OK now? Are we OK now? OK, so let's go back over here. Now, I'm going to say, I'm going to come to pop. And I'm going to say, val is top, tops m data. So tops m data goes to val. Therefore, black is coming out to here. Then it's going to say, to delete. So it creates a temporary pointer called to delete. OK, that's to delete. And it says put, copy the top into it. So top is pointing to here. To delete will point to here now. OK? Then what does it say? It says top is tops next. Top is tops next. Who's tops next? Blue, right? So top's going to point to blue. And this connection is lost. Now it says delete to delete. So to delete is going to get deleted. Sorry, not that. To delete is deleted. Value is here. It returns the value out, and the black goes out. So every single time, pop happens like this. And pop is not checking to see if the stack is empty or not. I casted the Boolean operator over here, and the Boolean operator if the stack is casted to uh, Boolean, if it returns true, it means it's, it has something in it. If it returns false, it means the stack is empty. So the standard thing for it is essentially something like bool is empty, and it's the exact same thing. Return, it's the exact opposite. Return top being equal to null pointer. So these two are the same. One is the uh, uh, Boolean um, cast, and the other one is just the function is empty. And depth simply tells what is the num, because every single time uh, a node is getting created, 
every single time a node is getting instantiated, one will be added to node, num. Every time node gets deleted, num will be reduced by one. So it knows exactly what it is. The whole point of the thing is that no one can instantiate the node other than the class template. Therefore, template is a composition of node. Are we OK with this? All right. Now if I go here, let me just instead of one, two, three, actually add what I wanted. So I'm going to say over here, green, blue, and black. OK, and remove the four. And instead, I'm going to have over here dot push. The reason that I can do it like that is that I, I'm returning the, with that, the, standard, uh, uh, the standard stack doesn't return a reference of stack. I'm just doing it because it's, uh, it's easier. So 3.5 and 4.6, let's call it. OK, so now, as you see, I created a stack of doubles and a stack of strings. And I'm saying while I have anything in D, keep popping and showing them up. So it's going to push 1, 2, 3, 4 in. And when it pops, it comes up in re reverse order. Then it pushes green, blue, black, and it pops up in the, the re reverse order. So if I run the program, the result would be essentially this. Four doubles in a stack D, that's the depth. Which, is which, which essentially returns the, returns the number of nodes, and three strings in stack S. Now I pop one by one, and as you see, by, uh, in reverse order, they come out. And when I pop the, the black, in reverse order, they come out. Um, that's it. So that's essentially one stack. Now, if, if I wanted to make it a linked list, I could, instead of top, I would have a head and tail. So head will be what top is, and tail always points to the last one. So I can remove from the end and add to the beginning. So it becomes like a Tim Hortons lineup. OK? That's like a good solution for it, actually, if you want to actually, because nobody wants to cut in the middle, right? So that's essentially what a queue is. OK? That's called a queue. This is called a stack. So that's a composition. Please walk through it. It's good for your health. Um, OK, so that's that. And the next thing uh, is the one that is complicated. And I really urge you, I'm not going to walk through this one like the other one, because it's whew, OK? So uh, <clears throat> let me just bring it up and explain how things are done. And go home, walk through it. F10, F11, your friends, do it, OK? Walk through it to see how it's done. So uh, just to show you what's the output of this uh, uh, program is, this is what it is. So it says, books available on C, reference 1, 2, 3, crime and punishment, fox and socks. Uh, uh, sorry, no, no, no. Uh, library list, list, we have Vaughan, Toronto, Yorkdale. And book lists, we have C reference, C++ programming, crime and punishment, Harry Potter, fox and socks, and green eggs and ham. So these are the things that we have. And then in my, pro in my main program, so this is actually what I did. So in my main program, I created the library and I created a book, as you see. Um, then I add the books one by one to the library. So uh, Vaughn Library receives the C, C++, and uh, uh, Fox and Sox. Toronto Library gets C++, C, and uh, Green Eggs and Ham. The York gets, so that's that one. And then after it shows it, one by one it shows. So library shows Vaughn library. The books available are these. Toronto library, the books available are these. York library, the books available like this. I go the other way. Now I say C reference one, two, three. This book is available in following libraries, Vaughn and Toronto. This book is available in following library which is C programming. Crime and punishment is in Vaughan and Yorkdale. So as you see, you can see library has which books, and you, say, you can see which book is available in a library. OK? This is association. So they are tight, as, uh, associated with, with each other. But if you look at the uh, as, as uh, a book by itself, 
you will see uh, that book by itself is a set of libraries. If I did not have the library coming back to this, which means I only had one way thing, and I only had list of libraries and not the other way, then I had aggregation, which means your libraries could exist without a book, and you can just access them, but the other way is not possible, which means it's uh, uh, a one-way uh, relation. Uh, that's why I gave you this example. So how does it work? Very quickly, I have a, an interface that can display read and hide subcontent. This is what I had to actually add to it. The reason was that it's chicken and the egg. I had books knowing which libraries are in, libraries knowing which books are in. If I printed the book, then book would get printed. And when the library gets printed, it's going to show the books inside. And the books will show the libraries inside. And the library will show the books inside. And the book will, so it couldn't happen, right? So I had to be able to hide the content, subcontent, if I needed, which I, I should be able to tell to, to uh, book that only show your title. I don't want to see which libraries you exist in so I can show it properly. For that, I created uh, this. I created uh, this manipulator. Now, if you look at it, you will see what happens. So essentially, when book is printing its content, so book is printing the title, it says if, if it's hiding uh, the libraries in next print, then uh, 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 simply uh, uh, reset the value back in and don't print anything else, just print the title. So if I'm printing the libraries, uh, if I'm hiding the libraries in next print, I'm just going to reset the flag. So in, next, the, in the print after, it, it will actually show the content. If it's not hiding, then show it. But when you are showing the library, hide the next content. So this is the manipulator that I created over here. You see that? OK? So walk through this. I'm going to quickly explain. You don't need to understand how it works. I want you to go home and do it. This code is a little complicated, I understand. But it's, it's using the knowledge that you have, nothing extra. OK? The op operator overloading and all those good stuff. So how did I do this? I created a class called hide subcontent, OK? And that class has a reference of an O stream that is a C out by default. And I can set that O stream to whatever I want. I overload this hide subcontent so it can accept uh, an O stream at left side, so it can actually at right side, it can receive an O stream into itself. It, sorry, it can receive a, a, an, a, an, a printable object inside and return an O stream. Then I created a global variable of that type, global variable of type height subcontent, which is instantiated inside, inside the, the CPP file, as you see. OK, so I made that global, exactly like Cout. Cout got instantiated, and it's global to everyone. So what happens is that when, let me show you what happens. When, here it is. When hot hide subcontent sits between an IOable object and Cout, what happens is that it gets called like this because it's overloaded with IO stream. Take a look. You see that? So at right side is height subcontent, at left side is IO stream. But as a reference, it returns itself, not IO stream. So the result of this call. The result of this call, we're essentially 
be returning the object itself. OK? But during that call, now I have an opportunity to set a flag to write to, to, to true or false. All I need to do is to sit between this and IO stream and to be able to execute something while doing it. So when this thing is called, as soon as this height subcontact is called, what I will do, I'm going to call the virtual function of the object and say, hide next one, and set the flag to on. But if you re realize over here, the objects I'm working with, they are all constant. I cannot change their values. This is when you need to use the cast constant to remove the constantness. Otherwise, you won't be able to hack into it. So essentially, I say, I know printing is a constant thing. But because I want to change their flag and set it so in next printout they don't print the detail, temporarily remove the constantness and call the point, call the height sub content. And height sub content in the library, in the book, simply sets the flag to true. And now that the flag is true, the next time that is being printed, it's going to hide its content. And automatically, as soon as it hides its content, immediately it puts it back to, to false. So in next, it goes back to normal situation. But that is done in a constant display function too. So I had to remove the constant, uh, constantness over there too. Now, please walk through this at home. I know I didn't get anywhere, and I didn't expect to, OK? But it's a beautiful example, a real example, of what association uh, and aggregation is. So walk through it, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's, a, it's, an, it's an exercise. And the good thing is that in here, it's actually, as uh, uh, your at-home section, a pointer to a pointer is used. So you can actually see exactly what it is. So again, a pointer to a pointer is essentially a pointer to an array of pointers. Whenever you need to do that, you need to create a pointer to a pointer. And that's it. OK? So I'm not going to bother you anymore. Go back to your uh, 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 easy, breezy, uh, in-lab one. Give me two seconds. Is it a question about this or lab? OK, so I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, question about this or lab? Question about this? Yes. Huh? A pointer to a pointer is if you want to keep the address of a pointer somewhere, right. what do you have to create? If it's an integer, you have an integer. You want to keep its address somewhere. What do you create? An integer pointer, correct? If you have an integer pointer, you want to hold its address somewhere. What do you create? An integer pointer pointer. Okay? Yeah. Anyways, I'll, I'll pause.